Hello YouTubes, my name is Jason Allgood and this is my first uh, War Robots video with commentary. I am playing on an NVIDIA K1 Shield tablet and I had to overcome some technical difficulties as to how to generate content because uh, it's the first time I ever used uh, Shadow Play on my K1 Shield which is kind of cool. Um, but uh, what I had to do was I had to put it on high quality then I tried putting it on my SD card try putting it in my PC and lo and behold it degraded the video quality so then I just immediately shared it on Facebook it had the same video quality so it, it ended up being nice so I turned around and took this video and converted it onto or downloaded it onto my PC and here we are so uh, I'm kind of doing this the uh, the redneck way a little bit. Uh, I have it on VLC Media Player, and I'm just giving commentary right behind it with it playing in the background. Um, so generating content is actually very interesting for doing it in this manner. It's it's a little tougher, um, but it is fun, and it was a learning process. So uh, for the most part, I'm a free-to-play player on more robots. Um, the uh, you know I've been playing this game for probably two and a half years it took me this long just to get this far and to find robots I like and to uh, build them or to win them in the black market or you know get them by other means so I don't really have that much really interesting to show but we're gonna go ahead and jump into the hangar overview and I'll go through it alright so we got the bulwark here and uh, with the bulwark um, I have Mark 1 level 12 Dragoons and it is currently Mark 1 level 9. Um, I Usually I try to go with the formula of boosting uh, the weapons up two levels above the uh, actual bot itself. That's the typical formula that I try to go with. I find it the most enjoyable. Um, I got two of the uh, advanced armors. But they're at level one because they're just way too expensive to boost and i'm working on uh generating and making my other robots better because if this bulwark goes down what else am i going to use um then i have a standard armor at rank four quantum radar and then i managed to get tobias as my legendary pilot um moving right along we'll go take a look at tobias's abilities so gold, gold was a hard thing to generate, but I haven't hardly spent any gold over two year, two and a half years of playing. Um, so when pilots came out, um, it made it easy for me to get a hold of the legendary pilots I wanted. Plus I also won two legendary pilots, uh, Adrian Chong and uh, whichever legendary pilot is for the Ares. But I got to build an Ares, so I I'm halfway there. So let's jump into the abilities. We have Tobias's live feed. Um, so yeah, all active modules, including Quantum Radar, recharge 40% faster. This means as soon as a Aljun lands, or as soon as an Inquisitor lands, or as soon as you know a uh, Pursuer loses stealth, before y'all even have it pop again, I already have Quantum Radar ready to use again. Um, then uh, modules expert. That was a lucky roll. It just happened that way. Um, so uh, all effects on active modules last 25% uh, longer. So for the eight out of the 10 seconds that an Aljun is in flight, or the eight out of the 10 seconds that a pursuer is rushing you in stealth, I can light them up. Um, mechanic, I had to re-roll for that ability. Um, freaking what it does is uh, repairs 0.5% of maximum durability. I have uh, 180,000 health right now on the bulwark and with a booster I have 200,000 health. So between juggling that, the fan length shield and the physical shield, I can regen health pretty rapidly and have things to cover it. Uh, Roadhog um, on the Bulwark uh, increases movement speed by 10%. I may actually re-roll for this later on and shoot for uh, 
uh, increase uh, generation regeneration time of the phalanx shield by 15%, but I've actually found Roadhog to be somewhat useful against the pursuers and against the blitzes that like to run point blank on you because if they misstep and I catch it, you break left, I go right, I can get a couple of more shots on you with the Dragoon, and odds are that's all I need. But uh, that's Tobias in a nutshell and what I've done with them so far. <clears throat> and really, in this gameplay, I'll only use the Bulwark, but I'll go through my entire hangar and tell you what's going on and what I'm doing. So then we have the Aljun. Um, the Aljun I have at rank 6, Adventures at rank 8. So here I follow the formula 2 to T. Legendary pilot, level 40. Uh, she just popped up one day. I had the gold, so I was like, click, bye. Um, I have the uh, standard uh, nuclear reactor at rank 4 for this. Uh, I just started investing in damage for this thing because I love it a lot. Um, and also lockdown ammo. I use lockdown ammo because sometimes you can lock an opponent down and force them to burn their abilities early. So you make them differentiate from their plan and now they're playing your game. So that's one of the reasons I use lockdown ammo on the Aljun instead of Quantum Radar. Um, of course, um, the... Uh, Legendary pilot ability. I uh, have increased uh, ability damage with the Aljun. It is perfect. Mechanic. I had to reroll for mechanic, sharpshooter, and speed shooter. I had to reroll for all three of those. Um, and this will probably be the new meta after, you know, the Ares takes its massive nerf. Um, which, I mean, it's a decent nerf, but it's not going to stop the Ares trade. It's only going to slow it down. But this may become new meta, um, so it's worth going over. Um, so again, mechanic, increased survivability. Um, you know, whenever you're in cover, whenever you're in stealth, whenever you're just walking around, or when you're lighting someone up, you're still regaining health every second. And the Aljun shockingly has a lot of help. Like, it's almost a flagship in a way. Um, but uh, then we have Sharpshooter. Uh, increased shot, shot group by 30%. It makes it essentially a 500 meter sniper with a lot of freaking bullets. Um, then we have Speed Shooter. It increases acceleration mode 66% faster. It is a must-have. If you are going Avengers and... Aljun, th this is the way to build. Um, not to mention the Avengers getting ready to take a nerf of uh, minus 25 bullets per second. So having Speed Shooter and reaching that acceleration mode faster will be very viable. I don't know if they've took Speed Shooter into account or not when they're doing this nerf, but it'll be interesting to see after the new patch comes out. Oh wow, I actually kept that up there for a little while. Huh. Okay, then we have the tier. The tier, um, right now I only have one Pulsar. I'm going to build another Pulsar after I finish building my Ares. So I'll put Malantes on there. And then of course I have uh, two Marquis. Uh, or Marquettes. However you want to say it. Um, with those... Um, I have a decent balance with the Malats being 800 meters and the Marquettes uh, being at uh, 600 meters. Um, so I can do some minor outplay ability, start doing some pre-chip damage while support healing other snipers and other players. And then if they get within my 600 meter range, I can have that physical shield with the Marquettes and I could still lay fire. Um, regular armor rank four, standard pilot i'm going to try to get enough gold to save up for the legendary pilot when she comes out on the patch um that that's kind of my goal and my emphasis so i'm, I'm not too attached to this pilot but i wanted to have a pilot instead of ai control with no ability um so after i build my uh aries then i'm going to build the other pulsar 
And when I get both pulsars, I'll put them all on for an even 600 meter range. And the goal and the emphasis behind that is it's all an even 600, yes. But with the pulsars, I can shoot them with them with a steady stream of fire. And if I lock them down, great. Then I can bring out the Marquettes and light them up. And then in the meantime, I could still support lockdown and heal my team while I'm waiting for the Marquettes to recharge. That, that's the goal behind that. And I'm using Quantum Radar on it currently, which by the time I get the Pulsar, it'll all turn out great. Um, before that, I was actually using two Halos and two Orkins, and it was an interesting build, but I just wasn't happy with it. The the tier is not a brawler. It, 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 it'll be a good support sniper, I think. And then the ability on it is uh, the Marquettes get 2.5% damage, and that was just a random roll. It happened that way. Then we have the Inquisitor. Um, I, I have two Freedom at Nighters. Like, the 4th of July event has been awesome because I played every day out of the month for July because I had the month off in July. And it has been awesome because I got two Freedom at Nighters, two Freedom Avalanches, two Legendary Pilots, 1,500 Femur parts, 5,000 parts for the Ares. I had 3,000 of the uh, power cells, but I burned through those saints like they were nothing. I played every day out of the month, got the 100 coins, did a random roll, and I, I, it, it was an awesome, awesome roll. Like, I just kept generating stuff. I was even getting, uh, I got 1,500 gold off of one roll, and I was like, yes! Um, so, uh... Later on, I'm planning on taking these weapons and putting them on a Fenrir because I think it'll be interest. It'll be an interesting play style, a brawly play style for the Fenrir. Um, but uh, it's okay right now for the Inquisitor. Um, but uh, ideally for the Inquisitor, I'd probably run two uh, Talumbas and uh, an Avalanche because it does a surprising amount of damage and using the lockdown ability on that and holding people in place while you're splash damaging them especially in Ares dipping around the corner is just hilarious uh, to me um, so regular pilot um, these were random rolls also but lucky random rolls bounty hunter uh, not too effective uh, given the level of my Talumbas and my Avalanche, and not too effective with uh, the current state of the Ember and the uh, Igniters, but I think it'll be more effective the higher level that gets, the uh, weapons get. Um, Wonder Worker, Wonder Worker happens to actually be the ability for the Legendary Pilot for the Inquisitor. Um, I never have an intention of going for the Inquisitor Legendary Pilot, but this pilot is doing great so far and I don't see a reason intent or purpose at most I may at bare minimum uh, promoter and see if I can get the uh, mechanic ability if I can I may re-roll for it but after that I, I don't have too much of a desire for you know going in you know investing all in into pilots for the Inquisitor like it it just seems very slow it's an over glorified stealth griffin <laughs> <laughs> that that that's that's all I have to say about the Inquisitor. It's a stealth griffin with two mediums and a heavy, and it moves at the same speed almost. It, it uh, why? <laughs> but I do I do love the Inquisitor, and it's one of my better uh, robots that I have right now. I have a Spectre at level one, but I don't have four Vortexes. I have two Vortexes, so uh, with uh. The Raven, of course, the Raven's going to get a buff, increase their ability, and then when it jumps, it will have increased uh, weapon damage by 20%. I'm using two Vortexes and two Halos, because I like the 500 meter range, but I also like the versatility of the Vortex being able to shoot over cover, and how it does so significantly more damage than just the Aphid. Um, I have an Aphid at the same level, and the damage is already showing great significance. But uh, with the uh, Halos, Lockdown, Energy Shotgun, um, 
get rid of those phalanx shields as quickly as possible. Energy shotguns are great for that. They're ridiculously good at that. Um, then with the vortexes, I'm provoking uh, enemies to uh, use their abilities early. Their stealth jumps, their take flights, their invulnerability shields. So I can fire through cover and have them burn an ability. And then of course I got the double jump to get in and out of combat quickly. So it is a little bit of versatility, plus also at 500 meters range, or less than 350 meters range, those vortexes won't fire at all, so I don't have to worry about wasting the vortexes on accident with the halos, unless I'm within that 350 meter range, and then the vortexes will fire. So it's good to have that little balance. I was going to shift those over to the uh, Ares when I finish building the Ares, because I think it'll be suited for more deceptive gameplay. And then Adrian Chong, I have, oh yeah, of course, uh, nuclear reactor level one. But uh, I have Adrian Chong here, and I had to re-roll for Gunsmith Vortex. Um, but I am happy that I did. So let's go ahead and jump into some gameplay. So, Beacon Rush here, I'm going to be using my best, I'm going to be using the Bulwark starting out, and if they take it out, I'll go to the Tier or to the uh, Aljun. I captured the first Beacon, when I see a decent lineup, we got a Vortex Spectre, a Camino, um, the uh, Aljun, an Invader, and a Mender. I was going to go to the second Beacon, but then the Aljun was already there, and by the time I get there, like near it, It'll already be captured. I won't get credit for the beacon. So I just went ahead and went Michael Jackson down the middle. So uh, lighten up this uh, Camino on the enemy team. And I move it, maneuver over to where I could still get a little bit more fire on them. Um, there's only one person there. But now I'm already starting to see that there's uh, two people operating together in the guild. And they're trying to cut down this right hand side. Now the reason and the way that they do that. And what ends up happening with that, this is it's a strategy. What they're going to try to do is they are going to flank us, capture our home beacons, and then come up behind us and try to wipe the entire group. And if they do it correctly with four and two and we're getting hit from both sides and they have enough firepower on it, you can end up losing every single beacon if you do not stop this sort of uh, flanking. If you don't stop it, then, or shut it down early, then you're going to get steamrolled. Um, so then the Spectre drops down, and I start lighting them up. Not a care in the world for me on this one. This was, this was actually my first match of the day that I was able to record, but it was also my fun match. Um, Spectre came back, lit them up. And then we have a hover and a blitz here. So a pretty decent combo, but I have to pay attention to that blitz. It is a threat. And he has energy shotguns. He has the halos. So you're going to see, yep, no phalanx. And I'm suppressed. So I stop firing while I'm suppressed because I don't deal any damage when suppressed. Became unsuppressed. Re-engage that hover. I want to make sure this hover does not take off does not try to get behind us and of course now I am uh, you know locked down so became unlocked down even though I'm blocking with the physical shield I could still be locked down in the bulwark and that that is kind of a, a thing you have to deal with paying close attention to the splits they really really want to take out the specter so the blitz is gone the only thing left is the hover the hover refuses to leave his teammate which good on him and he's attacking with punishers and of course I'm getting hit by a calamity or something of the similar spark but I kind of ignored it because it wasn't doing too much damage and I helped cover that specter with my phalanx skill and then I took it down to let it regenerate so remember Raditz just remember the name Raditz we have another hover here, and I am nailing this hover pretty good. It 
and then here we go one guild mate's here now the other guild mate is right above me as you can see by that arrow he's locked down so the rest of the team is taking him out so and the other person is in a hetchy slowly advancing forward but he's not really advancing. He's taking cover and waiting for his opportunity. He sees it, he's going for it. I'm trying to get an angle on this guy above me, but then I notice uh, this Falcon coming up here, traditional as Falcon, but I dealt 25% damage to him, so the team can handle the rest. I'm over here, I'm focusing this Hatchy because he really wants to get rid of the Spectre with uh, three Vortexes in her Turan. So I just walk up behind him, not a care in the world, he's not paying attention, and I light him up. And of course, uh, I think that could have been a tear, but it was dead. And then see, here comes, here comes the other guild bait, already working this side again. Take another pot shot at the Falcon. He maneuvers to where I can't shoot him because he was in line with that, uh, that slit between the plates of armor and the, uh, barricade, and the, uh, ramp. So, uh, I, I was taking, I was giving him fire through there. There's a, uh, Bulgasari trying not to hit the, uh, physical shield he has, but that right there is Raditz and he's in an Ares he popped his shield was lighting me up so I stepped back behind this pillar behind cover so he couldn't deal any further damage to me so just remember Raditz and an Ares running solo you don't want to be out in the open you, you want to be within you know roughly two to three seconds of cover and of course, now I finally target him with the auto target. And I just light Riot Raditz up because he couldn't take cover. The Spectre, the Spectre didn't want anything to do with me, but he wanted to attack the Inquisitor. And then right here, I had a, when I was playing with the uh, K1 shield while recording this at the same time, there was a lot of heat coming off of this thing. So what happened was it caused my thumb to sweat and the uh, shield was not recognizing my input at all so and I was actually being a little greedy here I was going to walk work my way around the pillar to where when he came out that other side I would have had a clean shot at him didn't necessarily work out that way I had to stop wipe my thumb off and then continue playing So now we're kind of at a little bit of a lull, but I'm just looking around, checking everything out. There's Raditz again, and then there's the other guys, but I don't have a clear shot at them. So I'm going to go underneath here and around to where I have a clean shot to aim. Hey, Inquisitor. So I start lighting up this nemesis starting out, put decent damage on him. Come around. There's this uh, Spectre here, but this Spectre wants nothing to do with me. I give him a shot or two. You know, just to scare him a little bit. And I'm not using energy cells here. So, I was going to line up this shot, but then he took off. So, now I'm hitting all these guys outside of the shield. When I notice they're fully outside of the shield, then I start lighting them up from behind. And I still put effective fire on them. Um, just remember that nemesis. Again, Raditz. Raditz and a nemesis. So it was him and then the Etz, the Etzo guys that I was lighting up. And here's Raditz. He has a bone to pick with me because I killed his Ares. And it didn't last long. So he respawns and he comes right back at me because they have the beacon now. But we took their beacon at home. And... This is where he messed up. He, he comes at me with a falcon, but he fangs out, and I'm able to take 50% of his health. And then the uh, 
Specter wanted nothing to do with me, so he, he I, I don't know what's up with the Specter. He, he, they just prefer Inquisitors, I guess. He was the only thing I had a shot on, so I took it. I was going to go back up to collect the beacon, but that's game. So, uh, very awesome gameplay. Uh, the both teams uh, were fairly decent. I mean, they, uh, there were two Falcons, there was a Nemesis, there was an Ares, several Spectres, Bulgasaris, uh, a Hetchy, and a Camino. Um, so we're going to take a look at the scoreboard at the end. So I did 1.1 million damage, 7 kills, I only captured one build beacon. Would have captured the second one, but the Aljunari took it early unfortunate and then I would have recaptured a mid beacon but that was game um, but so crazy let's give it up for so crazy he captured four beacons he's probably the guy that ran out there and captured it near the end um, Raditz Raditz just started coming at me after I took out his Ares and uh, the uh, Etso guys uh, Brandon and Steven they kept trying to flank they kept trying to run the same plays and you know, it's like they, they kept trying to do the same thing and expect a different result. So it's the difference between genius and insanity in that point. Um, but other than that, I mean, the teams were decently balanced. Um, though our team was a little overpowered in the beginning. But if they would have came out with their best stuff and not everyone using lightweights or trying to snipe. But if they came out with the the Ares, or they came out with a Falcon early, they would have stood a better chance. And there were two separate people that had Falcons, so, or if Raditz would have came out with his Ares early, he could have shredded down the Mender, or shredded down the uh, Invader without an issue, and the only thing would be left would be a Camino and a Mender, or a Camino and an Invader. But taking out the Healer is probably one of the best things they want to do. Um, so I tried to cover my team as much as I could um, using my Phalanx shield and after a while yeah I got a little greedy but also on the same note um, I was shutting down people trying to run that flank and I was always checking both lanes back and forth to see if anyone was trying to run down the side to go capture our back beacons and then try to run a form of pincer attack on us and flank us. So that, that was a good thing. Um, but also, whenever I saw I didn't really have a good or clear shot, I wouldn't just stay there. I would move. I would go to a different position and try to get the best shot I can. And then if someone was out in the open, I, I gave them my love taps. I gave them those, you know, five hits, immediate, you know, those five hits with the dragoons, and then like two seconds later I gave them that sit sit and then afterwards I would wait and try to wait for my ammo to regenerate to where I could actually burst people down more effectively um, I'm not meant for sustained combat but this was actually a very good game to where there was a decent balance between combat and me being able to regenerate ammo and actually show some of the mechanics that I've done and I've grown to to learn and uh, that was a uh, Yamato for me was uh, making sure that I was supporting my team by either protecting them with the phalanx or supporting them with sniper fire and burning down some of the harder to beat uh, bots out there or if I saw you know a solo player out to the side trying to defend against two people I went out and helped them so I mean that that's just the game and every game is different of course um but uh i was no good to my t i would be no good to my teammates you know dead out of the bulwark probably and uh so i mean yeah i could get my al june and fly around but i wouldn't be as effective i feel because i've been doing this uh range sniper build for the bulwark since silver league and finally just got the champion league uh this past season woo champion league yes finally but uh it, it only gets harder from there and uh i didn't 
do any additional looks or investigation into oh well what was my opponent using or anything after that because I've already beaten them what's what's the point in looking at them if this is supposed to be champion league I shouldn't be you know concerned about what they're using now if they took out like my bulwark in the first 30 seconds of the fight I'm gonna be like okay I gotta see what these guys are using that then I'd be a little curious but for me to go an entire match without the bulwark going down I have no complaints none at all I mean to me this this was an ideal perfect match it happened to be the first match of the morning and it happened to be the first match that I successfully recorded so uh, thank you for your time everybody um, of course you know I'm human also I made a couple of mistakes I, I did put a round into the Ares shield when you know the Ares had a shield up it kind the shot came out the shield came up at almost the same time and everything to where you know I wasn't fast enough to lay off the button for a little while but after I saw the shield come up I didn't lay fire into it and uh, similar thing with the nemesis shield I I've tried to fire past it and I it got a little sketchy I couldn't quite tell if I fired past it or if I hit it but I laid off waited for the other uh, targets to be outside of the nemesis shield and then I started lighting them up from behind and it should have helped the team out, but uh, I don't know what everyone on the team was doing. I, you know, in some cases it's hard to keep track of your own teammates because I was playing solo. I was not paired with any of these guys or talking to them over Discord or anything. Um, we had two players that, you know, were paired together that could have done that, but as you could tell from their their strategies and their movements, they weren't really coordinated enough. So uh, they, they just kind of branched off and started doing their own thing after their first couple of failed attempts. And, I mean, they could have really put a hurting, like, on both me and that Spectre if they would have focused fire. Like, when my Phalanx shield was down, if the uh, hover turned around and focused all his punishers on my physical shield, he would have ate my physical shield up to where it was nothing. Here... I, I didn't hardly take any damage to my physical shield. M maybe some splash damage from rockets. I mean, did I take any damage? Like, is there a puff of smoke? Let's see. No, there is never a puff of smoke coming out of this whatsoever. So, I mean, that that is a very interesting thing. Um, Raditz, feel sorry for you, bud. Um, yeah, don't don't charge a bulwark like that. Get, getting a blitz. A blitz would be better at charging a bulwark than, you know, feigns out with a falcon. Alright. Um, that's all I got. I, I'm decently skilled with the bulwark, I guess. But, um, I'll try to generate more content as I go along. And I'll try to improve my uh, other robots in my hangar to where I can generate this content. Everyone take care. Have a great day.